What's up, Madden 16 fans, guys? I'm excited to show you what I've been doing here. Uh, if you guys don't know, my name's Cody, and uh, we make uh, Madden videos, and basically uh, what we try to do is give some strategy behind them and uh, give you some insight into how I like to play the game. So uh, with that little intro, I want to hop into this. Basically what we want to start doing is uh, some Inside the Mind uh, videos and basically talking about what I'm doing in the gameplay. Uh, as far as the guides go, I want to quickly address that as well. Um, our guides, I have the offense done, but the defense is, is not written up yet. I'm um, still tweaking some things, and I really wouldn't want to put them together as a bundle. Uh, but what I might do is I might go ahead and throw the offense up, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but basically, um, you know, what we're rocking is we're rocking the same books. We're just rocking them in a little bit different of a way. And uh, so I'm actually kind of considering making a little upgrade deal where, like, if you bought the first guy, then you can get the second guy, like, 50% off or something like that. But uh, but just let me know. Give me some feedback on that stuff because um, it is actually an updated version of the guides. But I think that I really run it in a completely different uh, completely different way way and um so so i definitely think it is new content uh it's just is it a matter of you know can i give you guys a little bit of a discount for those of you who bought the first guy because they do build on one another but um yeah that's what we're doing here uh so far i want to hop into this real quick um guys for you don't know if you don't know about jason beret guys get on him uh he has been my uh go-to guy here uh as of late um but what i like to do is this Dime 146 is actually something that's really interesting to me um, because of the way two man under works. It just works really well. I've actually got some cool blitzes uh, and things like that that we can utilize. The other thing that's really neat about it is that it's very effective when we talk about um, quarterback contained defense. So normally for the first drive, actually, I normally like to stay in that. I know I hopped into the, into the normal defense, the uh, uh, what, what's it called, the the nickel three three five odd out of New England's book. Um, so I hopped into that opening up, but here we're going to get more conventional. Um, but basically what I like to do is um, come out, kind of first drive, just kind of fill my opponent out. A lot of inside zone, and that's really what you'll see a lot of guys do is is inside zone, and then, um, you know, four verticals, you, you kind of see that in pockets. In pockets, But the cool part about this uh, defense is that it actually provides you a pretty good foundation uh, to go ahead and play with. What I like to do is bring these safeties down in the box like so, and, uh, and then see what they're going to do. Here we got ace offset inside zone. I mean, I could have could have guaranteed that. And, you know, when I know that what they're going to do, and and actually, the big dime one four six is really good for like spread offenses or heavy passing attacks. When they get down to those like big tight end sets, you you kind of want to dumb it down and go into this three three five odd in my opinion. Uh, and what I like to do is just go my standard cover three. Um, and the reason I like to do that is because it gives me a user safety into the box, and then I can you know kind of make plays and things like that and have a little better numbers game. And here I just get freaking blown. Uh, I blew a blew an assignment. And basically, what I'm finding this year is that you, the defense really has to pay if they blow an assignment. Uh, and so it's become a lot more dumbed down, if you will, uh, as far as the way I play defense. I don't know if that's everybody, but I know that's definitely me. Uh, as far as the way I play defense, I've really dumbed it down a lot. Uh, a lot of basic cover three, cover two kind of thing. Uh, I'm finding that cover two sync is actually very effective this year. Um, and it's a different type of cover two sync than we've ever seen before. It's cover two sync with man coverage on the outside. And I've actually, actually ran that and, and really... I have had pretty good success because you get the it does a really good job for like those user streaks and things like that so um, if you guys want to try something a little different you may try that out um, but anyway yeah but I'm liking this 335 odd uh, like I said it's it's the typical stuff that I've been doing all season um, and it's been it's been good because what it does is it makes it a very difficult thing to do to drive the ball up the field you know nine times out of ten you know you see you know a lot of times for the for this guy specifically you know he's had some success here I've actually had a couple of, of situations where we played really well we had him in a third and long and then he ended up uh, you know end up getting out of it but anyway Let's see what we can do here. First and goal, probably going to go fullback dive. He goes with a toss and gets in for six. So good call by him. Uh, and that's really, you know, normally what we'll see and, and normally what we've seen. And we like to take note, and that's kind of the important thing, guys. Um, what I would recommend doing if you guys are watching these videos uh, is, is kind of having a little note sheet or a little uh, pad on the side here uh, to get the most out of these videos so that you can take some notes of the things that I say so that you don't forget them. And then after the video, kind of, you know, kind of reflecting on them and things like that. I think I think a lot of times as people, and, and this is just in general, but as, as far as learning goes, when you're trying to learn something, have that time for reflection. I think it's very important. And uh, I think it's even more, you know, it's just as important when we're talking Madden. So, um, hopping in. This is the new offense, guys. This is the offense I run a lot. Um, and it's this gun snugs uh, is basically really what it what it boils down to is I run a lot of gun snugs. And um, the reason behind it 
is because I think it gives a very good, very solid way to beat uh, two man under. Okay, and that's the America's defense. Almost everybody runs two man under. Um, I run two man under, so um, you know that definitely means other people do. So. Uh, and, and, of course, you know, I, I don't run two-man under all game. Uh, most people run it all game. Um, and then some people run zone and things, but they're basic defenses. And really, that's kind of the heart of what we're seeing this year is a lot more basic styles uh, of defense. And, um, you know, that's to say more on the way the game works now as it's kind of reflecting real NFL concepts and that you don't see a whole lot of people running, you know, very exotic zone blitzing defenses. A lot of people run these these basic man uh, basic man, basic zone, cover four, cover two, cover three, cover six, those kind of defenses. And so um, that's what we're seeing. So as an offense, you're going to have to really you know, work a more conventional style of offense, which I think is actually a challenge um, for most of us this season, uh, from what I've seen anyways, that we're having a lot of difficulties uh, when we talk working with these basic, um, these basic uh, plays. So so definitely, uh, it's it's definitely more of a a, con a conceptual game, uh, and what I mean by that is that the game takes on a new look, and that it's not necessarily about um, user catching or user skill or any of that stuff, uh, as much as it's about being able to uh, to have an offense and a defense that both reflect you know conventional things and also reflect uh, Madden Maddenology, if you will, um, the ability. Well, and that was interesting to me. Jamie Collins just went right off me. But uh, with a basic cover six, the ability to you know get pressure only sending four guys in a base rush, and and really that's what we center around in our three three five odd defense is the ability to have pressure sending four guys with a base rush, and uh, and so that's what we look at doing here. But um, anyway, definitely a lot of things that you guys. Uh, can really pick up on, I think, as we watch these games and, and and as we work with this stuff. These are all live commentaries, by the way. I just throw the game on, play it, and commentate about it. I think it's actually most beneficial that way because um, what it forces me to do is it forces me to talk about things as they're coming up. And I think it also allows you guys the opportunity to really uh, learn a lot as far as... Um, as far as learning curve, um, what we're really trying to do is give you something that you can see on the screen and then talk about it as we're doing it. And so, um, you know, one of the reasons that I've been actually really working hard to provide these opportunities is because I think that they're the most effective ways um, to learn, not just the game I'm adding, but the game of anything, really. And um, and so that's what we're doing, what we're doing here. But anyway, um, go ahead and hop into the first drive. You saw a lot of gun snugs. Here I'm going to go to the shotgun split close. To a little money play. Halfback wheel, it's a very popular play. I know a lot of elite players run it. I kind of use it sparingly, like I said. Uh, normally, you know, I, I can find success with it in key situations, so I'll kind of save that play for those situations. Primarily, you're going to see me in the gun snugs. I'm very, very comfortable in the gun snugs, and uh, so that's normally what you're going to see me run. Um, but anyways, guys, what I'm liking with this offense is that it looks, it's a lot of different motions, a lot of different concepts, but I think it gets at a lot of the same purposes. And uh, and so you know that's really what we love uh, we love about it. Um, I'm using Tony Romo. In my opinion, um, I'm using the I don't really know all the players. I think it's like the Mutt Master or the Offensive Style Master or something like that. Tony Romo, but basically, um, he's the best in my opinion, the most accurate quarterback so far. Uh, I know John Elway has one higher deep throw accuracy, um, but I think for the coins, uh, I think Tony Romo is actually better. So so definitely check him out. Um, and that's really what we're doing. Like I said, offensively, it's a lot of snugs. Uh, and really what we're looking to do is kind of use our motions and things like that to uh, really force uh, the opponent to have to defend a lot of different air areas of the field. Uh, we try to, on one play, we try to really overload certain specific spots. And uh, and then the other thing that we like to do is a single back bunch. Uh, and try not to give away too much of the guide stuff. But uh, we like to load up our tight ends in here and use this as a heavy running set. Uh, I know that I've given, I know I've talked a lot about single back bunch uh, this season, so I don't really, I don't really see an issue with talking about it here in the guide or here in the the gameplay videos. But uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best mini schemes because you can run and you can pass. And um, anyway, so so that's why we run it. Sometimes, so what, what I like to do is the quick pass, uh, the quick flat, the quick spacing route. Uh, I really like that in combination with some of the other things that we're doing here. Um, this guy's got a lot of legends and a lot of really elite players. So I just try to keep that in mind. And uh, here he ends up here, here he ends up stopping me. Uh, another thing that we have access to is in the Gun Ace Twins. We can get into that too uh, with the inside zone. I know a lot of people like inside zone, and I think I like it. I, I like it, you know, for you know a couple reasons. Uh, most of which, and here what we're gonna do 
is uh, we're going to run the clock down to one minute, and then we're going to call T.O. The reason we went no huddle here, and actually we're going to go ahead and run this little quick pitch unless he adjusts to it. Um, but basically, we wanted to kind of play a little chess with him here. It's it's really interesting to me, the more, uh, the, the, with the speed of the game, when you really slow down and you really chess match someone, um, you find that it's actually very beneficial because it's really a mind game because he's set up in whatever defense he wants to run. And knowing that we haven't ran the toss yet, um, and we're just going to be able to easily spread that outside. So the cool part about the single back bunch ace is that you can run the ball right with the quick pitch. You can also flip it and run it left, and then you can run the inside zone right and left. And then the other cool part about it is that you have access to the shotgun ace twins offset. So in my opinion, for my money, this is actually probably the best uh, best basic uh, three-headed rushing attack in the game because it gives you so many options. Um, the only unfortunate part about it is it's a lot of chess. So if you're in a game where you have to quick snap, it's not always as effective because you have to use these audibles. You really have to kind of have time at the line of scrimmage uh, to kind of, you know, kind of really get at your point here. We're going to try to hit the quick pitch again because uh, he seems like he's kind of playing overplaying the inside. We're able to get outside with Dre Archer uh, and uh, and get in there for six, or actually a two-point conversion. I've um, actually been going with the short kick a lot. Basically, you just want to the, move the kick meter all the way over to the left and all the way up, and then you just want to kick it really, really not with much power. What you're going to do is you're going to give yourself Opportunity for LaRon Landry to come down here with 99 hit power or, you know, one of your guys with high hit power. You're going to give him the ball about the 34-yard line. I've actually been getting uh, a lot of people bringing you at kicks on me. So, uh, you know, definitely an option there. Uh, now, in this situation, this is where the Dime 146 is really going to thrive. Uh, we're going to start off with some base pressure here from it. But, um, yeah, what I like to do is send this, uh, and I don't think we even set the pressure up. And I completely effed up there and gave him a big gain. Um, uh, so he's getting the pressure picked up. He's going to run. I think he's got Kaepernick. Um, in this situation, we have got to get into two man under um, here. It's really important. Um, basically, real quick, and there's a little quick screen, and that should have been a pick. I don't know how he caught that ball. <sighs> Basically, what we're trying to do with this Dime 146, and we're not doing a really good job of it right now, is slow our opponent down. Um, and there we go. So, the whole idea behind the Dime 146 is it's kind of a play, kind of a, a formation, really, designed around this key that, um, um, basically, and we're having some trouble setting our plays up, so... Bear with me here. I don't know. I don't know how he's getting these players with nobody covering them, but he is. He went right down the field on us. It's gonna have a. And we have a guy right there. Interesting offense right here. Um, when we get down into like this situation of the field, uh, I like to send heavy pressure, and then if they have a solo receiver, I'll play man on this side. See if we can get some A gap. There we are. And now, in this situation, you always call that timeout. It's going to put him in a really precarious spot because if he just goes to the end zone, then it's going to be an incomplete pass. Obviously, he's going to have to kick a field goal. If he runs it to try to suck another timeout away, he has to take a field goal. So, in here, this situation, uh, we're going to send the house and then deep blue everyone play over top coverage. A little quick pitch C. And now we can call a timeout. We've got 13 seconds. And see, I think he actually was going to try to no huddle. Uh, but here he kind of has to take a field goal. Um, obviously, this is not the way we wanted things to work out. Um, but we did lock down at the end of the day and get him to have to take a field goal with eight seconds on the clock, potentially make a big play. Uh, defensively, we really kind of sucked that drive, to be quite honest. Um, too many big plays. And that's really the thing for, for defense this year. If you could prevent the big plays, the big chunk plays, the you know, the fifteen yard streak route or the you know, the twenty yard post pattern or the slip screen that ends up going for thirty yards, I'm finding that if you can prevent those, normally you're gonna be okay on the defensive side of the ball. Um, it's when you have those those big plays that you give up that it, it often becomes a you know problematic for you. Um, so in this situation we're just gonna try a little a uh, little little play here to try to just hit them deep, um, but that we probably won't get it to be honest. Um, if we're if we're being completely honest with ourselves, depending on what defense he gives us, but it's really just going to be a chunk play. And so he goes with 
America's defense, two man under. We don't have enough time in the pocket. And so we're going to have to go into the second half. Now, interestingly enough, we do get the football coming out of halftime. And that field goal is now going to become problematic because we're going to be able to go down, hopefully get a touchdown here, and um, and really work with that. Um, we're in this kind of transitional fray, uh, phase of the, the game. Uh, what I want to start doing is actually providing value to you guys. So if... Because I, and I and I say that like I haven't been trying to. Um, what I'm seeing is that the last couple of video, last couple of series that I've done, all of them are good. All of them have value, but do they don't they don't really have universal value. They they can apply to somebody that just picks the game up and plays it. So, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out some things that I can do with my channel uh, that are going to kind of complement everything that we're we're doing. And uh, so I am I am kind of going through in, in, in a transitional period, trying to kind of see what direction I want to take the channel and uh, what I really want to do. So if you guys could help me by just giving me your ideas and giving me your feedback on that, that would be awesome. Uh, so here, did not really want to do that, come out and make really two bad plays and give me a third down position that's not my favorite position to be in. Um, but... Uh, I can't, and I can't talk too much about the snugs because I, because I save that for the guide. But the the cool part about the gun snugs is it's very methodical. In that um, the openings are very consistent, and uh, what I mean by that is, if he calls two men under, there's a there's a play for it. Uh, if he calls cover four, there's a route concept for it on every single play, and so it really tailors itself to being a really hard uh, offense to stop. And, and, and that's really the heart of it, um, is to have a, a hard offense to stop. Uh, with the, uh, and guys, what I would recommend is what you're going to see here is a couple of really interesting things. Routes that are covered uh, in this year's game, especially by, especially like flat zones and uh, and things of that nature, those routes actually normally can be pass led open uh, by using a high pass lead, and um, and there, Tony Romo makes a bad pass, and that's really the heart of my struggles offensively this year is bad passes. But, um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend uh, at least looking uh, and seeing what you can do with it this year. The the pass lead system, in my opinion, is is really interesting. Uh, but especially like when they're in a cover two, normally a high pass lead on that speed out will work well for you. And and of course. You know, I talk more about this in the guide, so you know, definitely check that out. But um, you know, if we're you know just getting as basic as possible, uh, that's what I would say to you guys. So in this situation, uh, third and one, normally we're going to look to Reggie Bush here. Um, just try to pick up a quick flat, uh, and they're in man. The cool part about the snugs is it's very similar to like the gun split close, in that it has that nice route route to the halfback um, on on a, on several 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 plays. Um, and and you can you can check that out of course, uh, and I love a couple of different. I have a ton of motions. Try to motion someone on every play, and uh, and really like the way it works. Um, and there you see a nice dot against two man under, and you'll you'll see a lot of that. Like I said, a lot of players are running two men under this year, but unfortunately, what they're not doing is they're not calling um, blitzes in off that and other things like that. So if they're running two men under, normally you're going to see this. This uh, little scheme here is going to be really solid uh, against two man under. And we got freaking we got tangled up underneath and didn't didn't break out of our routes and Julian Edelman ended up getting caught up. <sighs> Unfortunately, so we'll see what we can do here. Um, uh, the kind of the interesting thing about this whole whole deal for me has been to you know see how different things work against different opponents. So some players have a really hard time with a certain play in the snugs, whereas other players actually you know don't necessarily struggle with that aspect as much as, as some of the other aspects, some of the floods to the left or to the right or whatever it may be. And then with their user player, they can kind of make up for their weaknesses. So um, you got to find your opponent's weakness and then exploit it uh, in whatever way that means. Um, you know, and, and obviously varying your play calling and things like that, having plays that work off one another. Uh, interesting enough, you know, people know like when you audible and things like that, it's going to kind of change where you're going to go with the football. Uh, and here we're just kind of playing some some mind games, and then we're going to beat him to the corner with Dre Archer. Um, it's all about knowing, based off what they do, 
what you're really wanting to look at. Um, with the offense, specifically the gun snugs, it's more about reads and constraint theory. And what I mean by constraint theory is having multiple plays uh, that go in multiple different directions. And, and the reason that's important uh, is because it's going to allow your... Um, it's going to allow your offense to begin to force them to, have, you know, they can't really overplay certain things. Like, they can't really overplay that little speed out that I do on zone of seams uh, because it's going to lead into some weaknesses on the other side of the field. Now, by establishing that route in zone of seams, we're able to uh, establish some things we're going to do later on in the game. So, uh, definitely an important feature of the of the game plan. Uh, let's hop into this 3-3-5 three, three, odd. Uh, and see what we can do. A little power O run. And that, like I said, the key to defense, in my opinion, in this year's game is playing a defense that's really not going to kill you. Um, and uh, what I mean by that is having a defense that's really kind of set up to force them to have to re, you know, kind of move, bend but don't break is it, it, at the heart is really at the heart of this uh, style of play. And there you see, there's the pressure. And that 3-3-5 odd pressure can be accessed. If you want that pressure, um, you can check out our guides below. And it's actually in that one, so you can still check that out. And he ends up roasting me over the middle. Aloka can't cover Demarius Thomas. Uh, the other thing is, like, matchups, too. Uh, that's important. So, like, route running actually matters now. And so, like, if I have, you know, a great man covering corner matched up against, like, a, a George, or excuse me, like a, like a Deshaun Jackson, um, that's actually going to make a difference now. I like, play a lot of, I like to play a lot of zone. So, like, I try to have high zone covering corners. But if you are someone that likes to play two man under, and you'll see, like, in the nickel 3-3, or the dime one four six, I'll substitute, and I'll substitute in these uh, corners that play really well in man. Whereas in the dime, or the nickel 3-3-5, you're going to see that I have a lot of good zone-covering corners if you go and check their ratings. Um, if you actually get a chance to notice the players I have on my team, uh, outside of my user player, almost every one of them are really good at zone. So, and I don't know how that wasn't a pick. Literally, the ball ran right through me. Uh, but yeah, I find that defense this year is actually a lot about that. Um, you know, not giving up big plays. And as I say that, we give up a bomb. I'm also finding that the key to stopping those streaks is having is two men under. Now, unfortunately, the problem with that comes when. I think in that play I had Casey Hay or Cameron Casey Hayward, yeah, from the Packers. Yeah, he's got 92 zone coverage now. Normally that's going to be fine. Like he'll be fine against most people. I think it's like the catch in traffic versus the spec catch. I really think it's more. I really think it's a combination of the two. Um, I think the spectacular catch is going to like determine whether it's a pick or not, and then the catch in traffic is going to determine whether he actually comes down with the ball or not. So like Kelvin Benjamin, who has like 95 catch in traffic and 95 spec catch, he's going to outplay um, someone like Casey Hayward in that situation because he has better uh, catch in traffic and spectacular catch than Casey Hayward has his own. So in situations like that, um, where you your corner is just kind of inferior. You, you really need to be in, you know, kind of too deep or send a lot of pressure. Normally, we're going to send pressure um, in that sense. Um, Keenan Allen's a monster, by the way. If you guys don't have this guy, he only costs, like, I don't really know how much it costs, how much he costs, but he he really is, is, is very affordable, um, and so I would definitely recommend him uh, to anyone on this in this game. Um, but the cool part is, like, there you see they overplayed um, they overplayed that underneath route. So we went to this user catch over top. Um, now, he's got Gilmore out there. I don't know I don't know what his ratings are. But, like, the better the corner, the harder it becomes to complete those plays, unfortunately. But um, the thing about it is that, um, you know, you, you have to have your reads. And you, and you have to have guys that can catch the ball in traffic. That's why we have guys there, too. Um, set your depth chart up the way you want your players to be. So, like, if you're, if one, like, one of my routes, for example, is that um, 
angled corner out, corner out. Well, it's important that I have um, that I have a guy with high catch in traffic and high spec catch there. So that's why um, that's why he's there uh, in that situation. There, I was trying to see, and I and it's actually interesting to me the way Cover Three play Cover th or like flat zones from Cover Three and Cover Four play in comparison to Cover Two. If they're in cover three or cover four, normally those flat zones are going to kind of go play curl to flat. Whereas if they're in cover two, those flat zones are going to play more of a flat roll. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So it's just something to keep in mind um, as well. So in this situation, we really need a, a play. He goes man coverage. We're able to hit that speed out again. And Dorsett's able to dot him up. Um, so huge, huge, huge gain there for us. Um, in this situation, we're going to try to hit Dorsett. We're going to try to really, really try to take advantage here of some of the things we've been setting up. See if we can't get him to crash down on the speed out. And we do. And there's 96 speed Dorset beating his man. We had been setting that up all game. Um, and that's kind of how this offense works. It's based off the constraint theory, which again, multiplicity of plays that go in a multiplicity of directions. It makes it hard for the defense to overplay. And when we, we saw earlier on, he's overplaying, he's overplaying, he's overplaying, and uh, it led to something else. So definitely, definitely an important thing. Here you see he's overplaying that toss hardcore to that right side. So we're going to run it in behind to the left side now, have a pulling guard out there, and then um, obviously, unfortunately, Unfortunately, I think it was that Hartstock who wasn't able to make that block. But you know, that's, it, it all comes with it all comes with the territory. You know, you're not always gonna you're not always gonna have every two point conversion, but most of the time, um, you know, with this offense, the way it's gonna give us those, those percentages um, is is kind of interesting to me. So, uh, but that's why we do what we do. Reason we kick it short again is that normally we'll get. Um, uh, oftentimes we will uh, have run into situations where, uh, you know, that that will work, and um, most of the time actually. So uh, here, looking to kind of dumb it down. Here we get down into our three, three, five. There, I kind of overplayed, unfortunately, uh, with the user and kind of shot the gap good, but I didn't finish. And uh, and 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 the cool part too, what I want to talk about real quick. Having defenses for every formation of the game, um, you're going to defend the single back jumbo pair a little bit differently than you're going to defend, say the, um, say, say the gun snugs. Okay, so you're going to defend the single back jumbo pair in a specific way because most of those routes are uh, meant to target uh, a. Sp a specific area of the field, and that being the corner route to the tight end. Uh, obviously, the running plays as we end up giving up a huge run. Um, okay, so he's gonna he's gonna try to clock me out. Uh, so now we have to really kind of lock in here and uh, get a stop. Uh, I don't think we should pass a minute. Dang it! Okay, we got the blitz coming off that edge. Blitz off each edge. Wrap up. Okay, we've got 133 left. Uh, he will he will probably run that. Um, so we're gonna send some pressure. My main responsibility is a streak, so I have to be mindful of that. Can we get a block shed? Nope. He's gonna be able to run it down. We have to call Tio, and now it's all t up to the to the goal line. Uh, we like 3-4 solid. Clamp double go. And it's a big play in the backfield. We got to hold him. To, I mean, we, he can't score on us, basically. So, depending on what he comes out in. It's going to depend on our call here. So we got basically a three five three three five three five three look here. And uh we're looking to lurk him. Uh, probably looking to if we look at the weakness of this play real quick, is this quick slant. Um there's counter, we're in the backfield. So we've got fifty 50 seconds left, so that means we've got 20 seconds left. We get the stop here. Uh, he's going to have to go for it on all four downs. This is a really prime time situation to play um, heavy pressure. So we're going to bring it. Um, we're going to bring the noise here, 
and we're going to try to lurk over the middle here with uh, Buchanan. Um, and we're, we're really looking at the slant. Um, we've got everything covered to that left side immediate. This right side immediate is where we're going to look to get right in here uh, these tight ends. And he ends up getting them in the end zone for us. So nice play by him. Um, he's going to have to go for it here. Um, let's go cover one press. That's kind of our run D. Um, and we'll spy here. Bring Buchanan down. Look at Z spot maybe. And we're going to pick that off. We're going to take that back for six. And we're going to take the lead, I think. If Buchanan can get his horse underneath and get his wheels on him. And uh, Duke Buchanan, guys, check him out as a user. Uh, he's a he's a great user player. So there you see a really good in in example of not giving up, not just playing two-minute defense. Um, that was a huge play. Um, you know, not just playing standard defense, you know, knowing the formation, knowing the plays, knowing that Z-spot has a flat um, and a spot route and a corner route, but the main one they're going to look to hit, especially in like a quick pass scenario, is that little quick flat. And uh, we're actually going to get the W here. So that was a really nice ending to the game. Probably something you guys might think it was actually kind of a cool ending. Um, haven't had many games like this where it was close. Guy played really well. I made a bunch of mistakes, um, and I'm sure he did too. So, so definitely, you know, learn from all those mistakes is the key here. But, um, but a good game here. He's got three timeouts. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed that. Um, I know I didn't. So that means I can't just be happy with uh, running the clock out here, running three quick pitches in a row. I actually have to move the ball. Uh, it actually puts a new dynamic, a new spin on things. Uh, and here we're going to try to once again see if we can catch him napping. And we do. And Kelvin Benjamin makes a huge catch. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get in the end zone here. Always important um, to get in the end zone. Now, in this situation, we're going to be able to go up uh, potentially here by two possessions. That's the key is possessions, not necessarily points. Uh, the key is possessions. You know that know that field goal, that field goal at half was huge for him uh, to get that, and that was poor, terrible defense by me. Uh, this is a good situation where we can fake the run and we can put some passing plays in behind it. So we're going to put Hartsock on a flat. We're going to create spacing to the left side as if we flip the play. We're going to snap it here. He actually ends up running off sides. Gives us a nice opportunity to potentially maybe go quarterback sneak. Um, quarterback sneak, if you guys don't know, is one of the best plays in the game uh, for short yardage. Uh, what I like to do, though, is I just make sure that you um, substitute in and make sure you have your, your, your players what you want, but uh, you want to substitute in a nice backup quarterback because you don't want your, your money guy, your, 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 you know, your Tony Romo, the guy that you spent 36 k on, you don't want him uh, to go down. What you'd rather do is use someone like RG3 who only has 1,000 k and then get that in there. Now, um, the reason we went ahead and scored there uh, is because on the kickoff, we can make a nice short kick. And uh, what you're going to see here, and of course that's not going to be good as it kicks it right out of bounds, but we're up by nine points anyway. Uh, and so this situation, and just to show this, we'll go dime one four six, and uh, we'll go overload, three press, and of course everything is effing up. And there's Aaron Lynch coming through the a gap, uh, and there's my great zone covering corners. He ends up coming down with it anyway, but again, I don't know if they, I don't know how they necessarily code that in but anyways guys that's a uh, that's a little bit about the inside the mind game uh, inside the mind video so i hope you guys enjoyed it uh pretty nice finish for you hope you enjoyed that uh and, and definitely definitely enjoyed making this one for you so